Welcome into this edition of Inside Bronkbuster Athletics. I'm Mike Philosoph, the Sports Information Director at Garden City Community College. Pleased to be joined this week as we switch gears from volleyball last week to soccer. We work on the pitch here on this Friday, and we bring in a member of the Bronkbuster men's soccer team, a guy who did play last year, great coach Corey Bryant. That's Leo Marini, who joins us from Brazil. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, well... It's, it's kind of nerve-wracking times, I think, for, for really for everyone. Uh, you're in a country that really is, is like on lockdown from, from everything that I've, yeah. that I've read. So yeah. how, how much of a challenge has that been just for you personally? Because, you know, here in the U.S., everybody's really complaining about it. But what about in Brazil? I mean, here in Brazil, things are really difficult, you know. Uh, from where I live, the uh, it, it's 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 going good actually we have everything's open but i have a couple friends from from the team too they live in sao paulo over there it's like everything's closed uh, they are on lockdowns they they can leave their houses it's really it's really weird what's happening here i see my friends i do everything you know so uh for me it's it's normal for me it's normal the situation here <laughs> you were born in the united states you're born in new york so you've lived both in the U.S. and in Brazil. So, so take us back on how old you were when you moved from the U.S. to South America. So the first time I moved to Brazil, I was a baby. I was born in New York. And so my, my family was here in Brazil. So it was easier to, to raise me. So that's why uh, my parents came back. But I was four months, and then I just I, I lived my whole, my entire life here basically until I was 13 years old. That's when I moved to Florida. Brazil has always been a soccer powerhouse. If if people yeah. are familiar and they watch the World Cup, I mean, Brazil's won a gajillion World Cups. Uh, Argentina, so like really the the South American uh, countries. Yeah. You think about soccer; it, it's really synonymous with with soccer. Yeah, so. yeah. Growing up in Brazil, how much did that help you being around that? And, and, and how much did you watch of the actual national team? Uh, here in Brazil, you, you, play, you play soccer anywhere, you know. You, you go to the streets, you play, they play soccer. You go to the beach, they play soccer. They have beach soccer. They have everything here. So soccer is basically everything. And I, I, I've, I've watched this, the national team since I was little, you know. I know I love football. I just – I soccer <laughs> – I love soccer and uh, yeah, it's been part of my life since I was seven, I think, five years old. I don't know. What do you think in, in growing up in both, really in, in, in two continents, what is the biggest difference, I guess the viewpoint with soccer from the US to Brazil? Like how do people view soccer in Brazil compared to the United States? I, um, like when you're Brazilian, uh, they think you're already good at soccer. <laughs> That's one thing, you know. So when I came to the United States, when I went to Florida for the first time and I told I was Brazilian, they were like, oh, he's probably good. You know, that's, that's how they see us. But, uh, but I, I know soccer, uh, it's growing now. It's getting bigger and bigger every day in, in the United States. But the, the vision we have here about uh, the soccer in the United States is not so good as they see us, you know. Because if you're Brazilian, you probably play soccer. But if you're American, you probably play, play basketball or football, you know. It's the, the same situation. Did you grow up, did you play any other sports besides soccer? No, soccer my whole life. <laughs> did it. You know, it, it, it's, it's great watching. And, and my dad played soccer in, in Turkey when he was younger. And, and now, of course, he's a big soccer guy. He's, he's trying to draw me in. I've watched the World Cup for many, many years. And again, I've watched Brazil for a long time. Yeah. To get you to Garden City Community College, how did that process work? It's not like you were right around the corner. So it all started when I finished high school and uh, I finished high school here in Brazil. So since I, I lived in Florida, so I knew how it was to, to live uh, in the United States. So I, and I love it. So when I finished high school, I already had in, in my mind that I wanted to go to college and play soccer. So that's how I ended up in, in Garden City. I got a good offer, uh, and I chose Garden City. 
you were recruited by one coach and then played for another. Yes. I so was how did that work last year? I mean, it, that, that's got to be tough on a, from a player's perspective. Yeah. When we got the news, we were in shock. We were actually, some were happy, some were, um, didn't go with the, uh, with the news. But yeah, at the beginning it was a little weird, you know, because we were starting the season. We had, a, we had played one game with the, the old coach. And then uh, after the game, he was fired. So we were like, whoa, it's big. Uh, we got a little scared about the rest of the season, how it would be. But he ended up, uh, ended up uh, pretty good. We went to the playoffs. Uh, we had a nice relationship. And now I'm really excited uh, for the next season. What do you think you've grown the most from last year? You played in 13 matches last year and you, you started. Uh, for Coach Bryant. So what do you think you've grown the most from last year now coming into your sophomore season? Um, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. I know uh, I learned, um, how coach wanted us to play. Uh, I understand that. Uh, so more about like the responsibility to be in the field, you know, to, to work with the other players. And that's, I think that's how I, I grew up. But about my soccer, I just play the same. But to work in the team, I, I think I got a lot, of, a lot better. Watching American soccer and watching Brazilian soccer, what do you think the biggest element that's missing when you play in, this, in the United States? Because you played high school here, um, and you also played in Brazil, and then you, you played one year of college ball too. So what, what do you think, if there is an element missing in the American game as opposed to really everywhere else? What happens is uh, before, to get, before getting to the professional, I think what we have here that the United States doesn't is futsal. I don't know if you heard about it. It's a 5v5 game. And that's how the players here get a lot of skills. So that's why we have uh, good players because of futsal. That's my opinion, I think. So if, if you, uh, the United States wants to get better at soccer, they have to, to put this new style of game. During your freshman year, you guys were in a lot of matches um, and, and you lost matches that you probably should have won. So yes. what, what, what do you think, what, what's the projection like for this year? And, and, and have you been, and along that line with that question, how much contact have you had, if any, with any of your other teammates? Even if it's a weak team and you know you're going to win, you, you, can, you can go to the game like that. That's how, that's how, we, that's how we lost. But... Uh, we, I've been talking to my friends, the, the Brazilian ones. Um, we have a bunch of new players coming from Europe, so I don't know them yet, but we have a group chat, so we, we, we keep in touch every time. And about the Brazilians, the, they really worry about not getting in the United States, so it's been really hard for them. So, A couple things on the, on the COVID crisis. Uh, how safe do you feel? I've asked most athletes that have been on the show how safe they feel. How safe do you feel now playing soccer in, in 2020 or 2021, whenever the season finally starts? I'm not really worried about um, this coronavirus and playing. I don't think uh, it would be a problem. For us athletes, uh, we have good health. I don't think the, the virus would be a big deal for us. So, um, and I know uh, um, the, the leagues in Europe are coming back. So if we follow the, the steps they, they're following, I think would be just fine. I wouldn't have, uh, we, would, we wouldn't have any problems with uh, Corona. This. Sitting in my living room the other night watching uh, an MLS match was uh, rather refreshing. So uh, it was good to see a professional sports league, if any, uh, start up again. So lastly, what kind of challenge has it had, or what challenges have been presented to you with this virus as far as working out and just being able to get ready for the season? Because for the most part, people across the world have been isolated. So it's not like you can go out and, and you know, do a one-on-one -on -one or, or two-on-two -two or five-on-five -five like you were talking about with anyone else. Yeah, that's the, the problem. I'm here, uh, I'm, I'm able to work out myself with myself, just me get ready, get uh, stronger, but uh, I'm missing to, you know, the, the real game. You have to play the real game. You have to understand the real game and not being able to play, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard. You kind of, you kind of lose uh, some, some abilities, some understanding of the game because you haven't been playing for a long time. So, but physically, 
and speaking for myself i feel good and uh because uh, i was working out but i was wearing masks and that's that's a, that's kind of hard to to breathe so well, leo we appreciate the time uh we're looking forward to getting you guys on campus it, it's yes. it's there on it's campus right now until we get you guys on so we're looking forward to it and we're looking forward to a a successful men's soccer team. So we'll see you soon. All right. Thank you.